everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we're really excited today because we are diving back into the 2000s. And we're talking about our favorite television shows from the 2000s. We already did the 1990s and we did the 1980s. So today we're doing the 2000s. <laughs> and uh, Terry, was this a lot of fun for you? This was. This was yeah. fun. There's some all timers here. Some yeah. great shows. It's hard to rank. It was. It was. And I don't, I'm, not all my picks are fiction. Some of them, I have some reality TV. I had A lot do. of good reality started, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so we'll be very curious to hear what you all listening, what you think, and what your favorites are. And we have a bonus episode for the patrons with our 11, 12, and 13 picks. So if you want to hear those, then you should definitely check out the Patreon. We have lots of perks for being a patron member. You get to be part of the watch alongs, which for June, we are having Wendy Stewart on and we're going to learn. She's the writer of Well Suited for Christmas, which is stellar. So that's going to be great. But those are the kind of opportunities you get as a patron for any donation, any contribution amount, uh, any tier. And lots of other perks. So please, 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 please check out the Patreon. It's the biggest way you can help us. If you like what we do, if you want us to be able to keep doing it, please, please, please. And you get those bonuses uh, if you uh, if you are a patron. So let's dive in. And what is your number 10? My number 10 is Nip Tuck. Oh, okay. It's the yeah. first Ryan Murphy show I ever watched. Uh-huh. Uh, my love hate relationship with Brian Murphy. <laughs> um, more hate <laughs> than love, mm -hmm. but I don't know. This this show is crazy. It's about two plastic surgeons in Miami, uh, Dylan Walsh and Julian McMahon, and Jolie Richardson, who I love, uh, is in it as well. And uh, you know, she's married to Dylan Walsh's character, and it's kind of a love triangle between the two guys. But the bonkers stuff that they go through with their clients drug meals killing people all this stuff in beautiful miami in the later seasons they moved to california um but man they tackled crazy there's a scientology episode in this movie that uh irked in movie not in one of the later seasons that like irked people at the time but it was one of the first shows you know not necessarily calling out but bringing to light like some of the stuff that they believe into um uh -huh. you know <laughs> because they kidnapped their son who becomes essentially a scientologist um it's crazy. It's absolutely bonkers. And so many people walk through the door. And I mean, it, it, it it's sexy yeah. at times. It's just uh, Vanessa I've Redgrave. That's a good plays. show. I haven't seen it. Yeah. I've never watched it. I mean, it. I don't know if you would necessarily like it, Rachel. Uh -huh. And I think that the first four seasons are great. The last two seasons have, they're okay. They have some good episodes. But there's just something about, I think because the men in the show were so diabolical and so likable at the same time with their trash of male, you know, characters that they uh -huh. were, that you couldn't help but like watch it because they were so charismatic and such good actors to pull off because they, they are trash human beings, you know, but, <laughs> you know, and, and also Vanessa Redgrave um, uh, is Jolie Richardson's mother. So it's a real life mother daughter on the show at times. And it's great. And oh, they have some bonker plots. Uh, so, some stuff that probably has not. No, I know it hasn't aged well at all today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, still they went there. They uh -huh. this is his shock. Yeah, this is Ryan Murphy shocking and probably one of the better of his uh, series. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, my number ten is a show that at one point would have been my number one no question but the last three seasons it really took a dive and then the finale is one of my all-time biggest disappointments so i debated should i put it on this list but i can't deny that for a long time how i met your mother was so important to me and i loved it so much and it has still to this day like some episodes that i just i think are so funny the cast had such incredible chemistry together and and I I just I love so many of the episodes uh, that, that even with it being so disappointing to me how the story ended I can't deny that a lot of the journey was really happy for me and and uh, really something that I absolutely loved and I've thought about 
uh, once me and Jax, once we finished square pegs, once we finished the next season and just like that, I thought maybe that would be fun to, to sure review. I've never watched the show, but I do remember when it ended, how that blew up. And I was like, Oh, I feel for you guys. Like I feel for fans, you know, it was a bummer, but if you can watch, if you can still rewatch what you love about it and still love it, then I think it's worth, it's worth like, putting on your list and it's worth like watch what you love skip the rest <laughs> there are certain shows that there are seasons i won't watch like oh yeah. that had, i forgot that season i only watched this because yeah that's what i enjoyed yeah you know? especially if there's like a a kind of like a bonus season that doesn't really like like for it's always um, the ends that get you it's always the later season yeah like that bonus season of it of once upon a time they didn't even have the same cast they didn't even like <laughs> I Rachel, don't that even. Doesn't that exist, doesn't Rachel. exist. Doesn't Did exist. Me? No, it doesn't. I know. Exist. I watched it, and I own it on Blu-ray. I, I do. I yeah, had to be a yeah. completist, but I will. I don't put it on. <laughs> so I, I, I do. Shelf. I do love How I Met Your Mother, but, uh, but, oh man, it in a way it shouldn't have been a surprise because, like I said, those last two seasons and that final season was just such a train wreck. But you, know, you just hope though. that okay, they're gonna like the whole time you're telling a story, they're gonna end. They're going to end with a, you know this, a good story, and they uh, and they sure didn't. But um, but well, how did you, know. you feel? Um, because I I heard being not watching the show, but they also ruined what was it Barney and Robin. How did you feel yeah. about that couple? Oh, I hated it like, so much. Oh, so you were a supporter of that couple as well, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I heard people like being so upset because they liked both of those what they thought were end couples, and then yeah, it was trash. Mm. But it did have some really great laughs along the way. Some yeah. of my my favorite episodes of television ever. So, uh, what do you have at nine? Well, my period loving heart. I had to put the the tutors on. Um, oh. Four seasons. It's about Henry the Eighth yeah. and all his wives. Guys, if you're looking for historical accuracy <laughs> in actual history or what people actually wore and how they behaved you will not find this here yes because is it is it is a sexy romp of a soap opera it is a it's really ripper. a bodice ripper it's and- a bodice ripper exactly <laughs> the way and it doesn't care because these are beautiful yeah. people and 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 there's so many and there's jonathan Reyes mayors who i think is actually pretty good as he's the young hot henry and people are like no henry was fat and or whatever with a drumstick in his hand you know people have that actually he only became that way older because his wound never healed and he had diabetes and he was a yeah. glutton. But he was he was hot when he was younger. He, everybody wanted him, you know. And, yeah. and Henry Cavall is in this one and Natalie Dormer mm-hmm. um, before she went on Game of Thrones. Maria Doyle Kennedy, who I love. Sam Neill. Jolie Richardson, too, plays yeah. his last wife. Gabrielle Anwar. So many people. So many mm-hmm. people who become... So many people who were famous, who are famous, and then became famous. Mm-hmm. But yeah, if you yeah. love bodice rippers and you don't mind some steam, mm-hmm. it's a show for you. And yeah. I, I ate it up. Like, I don't care. I love, like, Michael Hurst. He did the Elizabeth movies with Kate Blanchett. So, uh-huh. you, know, you know that it ain't going to be accurate. <laughs> but I will give him that he wrote every single episode of The Tudors. And then he went on to do six years of Vikings and he wrote every single episode of the Vikings. So the commitment this man has to making television is a plus uh, because he lets nobody touch his shows, <laughs> but, and he always makes it entertaining that way. So, but seriously, if you just want to watch sexy people be sexy. Yeah. And cut each and kill each other brutally, <laughs> then by all means, because Henry the eighth had eight wives and he was a crap person. Yeah. No question. Yeah. Well, my number nine only had two seasons, but I love and adore it. It got... Yes. It, oh, it's, sorry, um, he had six wives, not eight wives. I said eight wives. Oh, yeah. Oops, so, my bad. Uh, the, uh, so my number nine is one that only had two seasons, but I still love and adore it. It's uh, Men in Trees. Oh, yeah. Is my number nine. Uh, I love uh, R.I.P. and Heche. Uh, and the the whole concept is so brilliant. I don't know why they haven't made like a Hallmark movie kind of based on this idea. So they could she get him back to do it. <laughs> yeah. So she's like this relationship expert. She thinks she's got everything figured out. She ends up in uh, her her fiance and cheating on her, and she ends up in Alaska 
where they have way more single men than women. And that's why there's men in trees, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a small town and it's just so charming and funny. And uh, James Tupper. Oh, yeah. I love him so much in this. Uh, They (laughs) fell in love in this show, right? In real life. What's that? They fell in love uh, in this show in real life, right? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think so. They were, yeah. But they were married. They were an item, yeah. I think he's um he's the father of one of her sons. Oh, I didn't even know that. I'm pretty sure. Let me see. get that wrong. Let me. Oh yeah, you're right. They did. Yeah. You're yeah. that must be why they have such amazing chemistry. Because yeah. They absolutely... That's what I remember most of the show <laughs> that the lead characters fell in love in real life. Uh-huh. Uh, they have, yeah, they have incredible chemistry. It's so, like, it's just charming and funny and exactly what you want in this kind of a show. And I just wish that it had gotten more seasons because it deserves it. Yeah. And I'm just seeing so, on Rotten Tomatoes that it has 56%, which is a crime. So I will be <laughs> adding my. <laughs> Get a bump it up. Yeah, like, so funny because. Little shows like that just could not exist. You know, it was a miracle if they got more than one season, yeah. you know, back in the day. And it kind of today, too. You know, mm-hmm. it's a shame. Yeah. I wish that it had gotten more. Uh, yeah. But it was, uh, I think it was hurt by the writer strike. Yes, I have time. got a show on here, too, that was, like, essentially killed because of the writer's strike. 2007, yeah. 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 Uh, what do you have at eight? I have House, which... Oh, yeah, uh, Six of the eight seasons were good. Uh-huh. Um, and it stars Hugh Laurie, Robert Sean Leonard, a um, whole bunch of people. Essentially, medical show. Got a sort of Sherlock Holmes uh, mystery spin in it because, you know, they're trying to find what's wrong with these people. But it's, man, this show would be nothing. It's Hugh Laurie is like holds it on his shoulders. He is what the show is, just his insufferable personality and the people who love him who try to mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. lead with him but it's 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 great yeah. it's a great show and yeah. the last two seasons are kind of hard, hard watches but you know this yeah. six out of eight ain't bad yeah not bad not bad well my number eight is uh where i'm mad men oh oh yeah i love mad men yeah yeah <laughs> it's higher on my list oh, okay yeah. good uh, but yeah, I, I, it, it did start to kind of lose me after a while where I felt mm-hmm. like it became I can see pretty it, yeah. like repetitive in its themes and ideas. And it's like, how much can I take of Don, you know, and his, uh, it, but then I, I had to come back and watch the final season. Uh, right. And I thought I, it, it's one of the best uh, yeah. series finales ever. I think this, this like is the, a show the yeah, arc for are, his character it totally was oh. just. Yeah, and not only that, but this is a show, too, that we had to wait years between season four and season five. Do you remember yeah. we had to wait, like, almost two years for it to come back? Yeah. And yeah, the, the incredible attention to detail in detail every aspect. Spot they, on. The, I mean, they paid attention to every to lamp, to every, like, little tiny period detail. I mean, there's... Ooh, and their costumes. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. so it's amazing to watch just from that level, like just the incredible production design, but is, all the performances yeah. absolutely amazing. Uh, I know, and, and there's this amazing scene where we see uh, at the end of the day, like Joan is getting undressed, and uh, we see her underclothing. Like even the underclothing was period yeah, correct, but we everything. see how it digs into the skin and the right. marks of like. You know, the marks of her brassiere, like uh, the uh-huh. top that she would wear, that whole, like, uh, I forgot what they call it, you know. Yeah. Um, and well, and you see it evolve as it becomes, and you see it evolve, but like, I was, it's like the detail of seeing that stuff digging into your skin and, and what uh-huh. you had to wear to look, re- re- you know, presentable and, yeah. and chic and, and, and sexy in a way. It was like, it took a lot of work. Like, you see these people, like, oh my gosh, but it made me jealous because I was like, these men look so good in their suits and then I would right. walk outside and see these guys like with ripped jeans and I'm like, ugh. Uh-huh. You know? <laughs> or well, or very see, short jeans. <laughs> you'd see these arcs in these characters yeah. that were truly earned and over the course of of the many seasons, obviously Peggy's journey and, uh, and that was one mm-hmm. of the best parts of the final season when she yeah. is just like a... Uh, <sighs> 
uh, kick Peggy. butt, you know, she leaves so uh, and that great scene with her. Hey, like, Peggy storming struggled. out. I str- yeah, she's, oh. I struggled with her a bit in the middle for those seasons, but I think yeah. she ended up well. Oh, ended so good. <laughs> when she was there, I love you, you know, her. And then when the- when she stabbed her boyfriend by accident, Rachel. Yes. <laughs> and they lived in, what was it, Brooklyn? And it wasn't great. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I mean, even somebody like Pete, who is just despicable for a yeah, most not great, of Bob. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> oh, when he fell down the stairs, do you remember that one? Oh my mm-hmm, gosh, mm-hmm. such great moments. I think the uh, greatest episode is when that guy got his foot run over with a lawnmower in the oh, office yeah. party. Uh huh. Just you could. They got away with things that you wouldn't expect this show would do, and it's uh-huh. it was so tight. You know, yeah, it was really that's a good word for it. Yeah. Uh, so it's it's you know it's a great it's great it's a great show. Watch it, guys. Is. It's great. Uh, so what do you have at seven? I have a show killed by the writer strike. Um, one of the reasons, but I have pushing daisies. It only oh, aired for two yeah. seasons. The second season was shortened because of the writer strike, and it just did not have the legs to come back. But they did manage to end it in a sort of okay way like to have some kind of ending but i loved pushing daisies it was just it's a fantasy show i mean the guy it, it, elite pace uh played a pie baker he made pies but if he touched something he could he could bring back the dead but at a price where something else would die and he and uh chai mcbride played his friend and his sort of partner because he was a private investigator and he would have <laughs> he would have Lee Pace wake up the dead guys and of course Anna Friel was his um uh childhood crush and she dies and he touches her and he brings her back but he could when he touches you again you die you permanently die but he never touches her again and they kind of fall in love and they got a kiss to Reynolds rap. Remember that? And yeah. And he's afraid to touch her and he's keeping her alive. But that paid an ultimate price because something else died. And Susie Kurtz and Ellen Green play her aunts. They're very eccentric aunts. Susie Kurtz has an eye patch. And this this uh, show is uh, Brian Fuller. So you know that it's very uh, fantastical, very colorful. Yeah. Very bright, a good show. and it was a lovely show. Uh, it's great. It only has two seasons, but it's worth it's yeah. it's like worth a watch. A very short run too, not that many episodes, but it's definitely yeah. worth. I feel so sad it's good, that it's, it's not worth anymore. Yeah, and Christian Chenoweth is in it. You know. Mm-hmm. Well, my next one is one that a lot of people don't really think of as a television show. It's, they think it was more of like an anthology, like you know, Pride and Prejudice and things like that. But it did have two seasons. Um, it's called Cranford. And- oh yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. I mm, all right. I thought more of this as individual miniseries. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, how it's, I it's a gray area. I, I can see. Yeah, I I thought about putting it on my list, but I'm like, no, they're two separate miniseries. I guess mm-hmm. I still have that. I have an '80s mentality when it comes to miniseries. <laughs> yeah. Like, Part one, part two, <laughs> essentially is how I think about it. Yeah, I can see yeah, that. It's it great. Is, it this is one's great. Pretty episodic. I don't know. I just, mm-hmm. it, it, yeah. yeah, it's like I said, gray area, but. Uh, as but, is the as is the book that it is based on. Yeah, which I love the book. I love Elizabeth yeah. Gaskell. I she's totally might be my favorite writer of all Wives time. and Daughters people. Or Jane Watch, Austen. Yes. Yeah. Watch Wives and Daughters. Yeah, Read Wives and Daughters. Uh, and uh, North and South, North and South is yes. absolutely incredible. Mm. Uh, and uh, this is just such a charming little series Delightful. about this this town in uh, in eighteen forty two is the year. So in England and the various misadventures of these women, and that's one thing that's so great about. Uh, Elizabeth Gaskell is that she really wrote for women and yes. her her characters are even though they're in 1842 they feel incredibly modern like the choices that they make and in 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 the beginning of Cranford in the novel she like basically says like these uh these women sometimes wonder why they needed the men at all <laughs> Yes, and uh, yes, the, they so the, a lot of times the men were gone. They were out, you know, doing uh, things for work and stuff, and and uh, and that sometimes she would wonder, do we need them at all? And mm-hmm. uh, and it's it's so that you know that feels very modern, and you yeah, wouldn't expect totally. that from something written in the eighteen fifties, uh, but uh, but it was, and 
uh, and this, I mean, uh, the cast obviously is, oh, is Judy uh, Dench and the yeah. top cream of like, yeah. and I love it Melda too. Melda Staunton is great yeah. in this. And it's, then, it's older ladies too. We're watching from a point of view mm-hmm. of, of not the, like there's young characters, but it's also like middle-aged and older women and how yeah. they continue on. And a very pre- uh, Marvel, uh, Tom Hiddleston with his natural blonde hair in in uh, Cranford. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, it's in the the sequel, the uh-huh. Return of Cranford. Oh know, yeah, and the, and the yeah. train accident. Yeah, he's in it, falling mm-hmm. in love. You know, yeah, but you wouldn't recognize him because he's blonde in it. Because you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just like a cast of dames. I mean, oh, everybody's totally. a legend, and uh, I, I just. I love it. It's, it's, it's so wonderful. Good. It, it yeah. really is. Mm-hmm. So what do you have at six? I have a cartoon uh, which started in 1997, but it, it ran for 13 seasons. So essentially the entire early mm-hmm. 2000s up into 2010. Uh, it's King of the Hill. Yeah. Which I, I just... I do love just, it. Yeah. There's like, it's so great. It's like, I, I Hank Hill is me in many ways, but I don't live in Texas <laughs> and I don't love propane, but you know, it's Mike Judd. Uh, mm-hmm. So I like, I, I love him too. And he does the voice of Hank and Kathy uh, Ninjami as Peggy and, and Brittany Murphy mm-hmm. as uh, the niece. Mm-hmm. And it's just so funny. Him yeah. and his like dumb friends and, and Dale not realizing that his son <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the not so secret my son you know is not my biological son but uh-huh. it's just ridiculous yeah. in the situations that they the episode that stands in my mind so much is their son bobby who you know connie is his girlfriend he's going to take her to the dance it's so important but he can't stop eating fish and he gets gout at like 11 or 10 years old and hank is so disgusted with his son because he keeps going to the mall to eat <laughs> on his scooter i don't know if you remember that episode that sticks out in my mind and, and hank is like so disgusted <laughs> over bobby that's like, a good one yeah that is a good show bobby gets gout i mean it's <laughs> Or when they hide that they're grilling with um <laughs> oh, with charcoal. With charcoal instead of the propane. <laughs> ho ho ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. My number six is one that, again, would have been very high, but I do think it kind of fell off of the last, like, three seasons. Uh, it would be The Office is my mm. number six. Uh, it was also, like, very memorable as far as, uh, like, my TV viewing life because my we my friends and I would meet together and watch it every, every Thursday. We would watch it and... Uh, and it would, I, I really miss that. I, that time in my 20, like late twenties was a really, really, really hard time in my life. Yeah. But, uh, but I, this, like the social kind of moment of my life was probably, it was probably the most socially productive time of my life. Uh, the roommates yeah. that I had at that time, and uh, we're really social and we had a lot of uh, just regular activity, you know, that we do with friends and we would watch Lost together. We would watch right. The Office together. Yeah, and miss that too, like the communal watching. Yeah, and yeah. Th- it's not only that there's nothing like that anymore, but there's 
I just don't even have, like, if I wanted to do something like that, like, if right. I, I love entertaining, but I just, almost all of my friends live outside of Utah. Almost everybody. Uh, <laughs> that I have my friends. I have two, I basically have two friends. Maybe if I was really pushing it, I could get five people. Maybe. <laughs> I couldn't even get one to this house. I mean, <laughs> First of all, like I have friends, but we, we don't have anything in common. Like, yeah, like a thing that we all love. Yeah, that we all love. And then getting together is so hard too, because everybody's got family. I I don't have children, so I don't have that responsibility. And it's hard when you are married with kids and have other responsibilities that you may not have. But Uh I've never seen the office, but I know that people love it. But the only thing that I've seen in the office is, I can't remember who it was, but I saw a clip (laughs) Where he run, he hits a lady with his car. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, I think it's Phyllis. Merit. And they're all in the office oh. going, "Should we start a fund Merit for yeah. her college? Is for her son's college, like a college fund?" <laughs> and they all look around going, "That kid ain't going to college." <laughs> I laughed so hard at that, but also that is very true because we all know somebody like that. Yeah, and that's the only thing in the office that I've ever seen. <laughs> well, I do think that season two of The Office is a perfect season of television. Every episode uh, is hilarious and Are so you good. And it has in the reboot in the or the sequel. No, I'm not interested at all. Yeah. Not at all. And and I do think it's also a rare example of where the American reboot does improve upon the British. The British mm-hmm. one is is funny. Ricky Gervais is a funny guy, but it's way more caustic. It's way yeah. more it's- like. It's just yeah. not like even with Steve Carell and Michael Scott, like even though he is just ridiculous. <laughs> so there's always something that is kind of lovable and likable about it's Michael. It's sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. That's more sweet. And, and uh, so uh, every, I love, you know, every character, Mindy Kaling's character, so funny, so many good lines. Uh, there's the romance between Jim and Pam is so well done. Uh, the way it sort of simmers for so long she's with other people Uh, he's obviously in love with her how that all plays out is so good so romantic and i also i love i mean i guess do you care if i say a spoiler no go ahead seen it okay so like i their wedding uh they just knew that that everybody was going to kind of screw it up that all their friends were going to make it like (laughs) naturally. Yeah. So they get married at Niagara Falls and they, the morning of the wedding, they go off and they get married just by themselves with the, the, you know, thing uh, in, in Niagara Falls. And so then when of course everybody makes everything ridiculous they don't care because they already got they had their perfect moment yeah Yeah, which i just love that so their wedding was truly a gift to their friends now so i love the the premise of the show was it's the longest documentary right right because i I thought it was i i I didn't i i said oh it's a doc they're filming a documentary i thought it was because i've always interpreted modern family as that was a reality show Oh, right. Modern Family was them filming a reality show about their family with the interviews and stuff. That's how I interpreted Modern Family. And I thought The Office was kind of the same vibe. Like they were in a reality show about an, you know. Oh, yeah. No, it's a documentary. Documentary. Yeah. Which is obviously ridiculous. But I don't think they ever say in Modern Family if they're doing. I've always interpreted it as it is a reality show that they're doing. Well, in. There's a lot of really funny kind of recurring set pieces and jokes within the office, like uh, the uh, the relationship between Jim and Dwight, and uh, <laughs> and he is constantly kind of I have seen the memes on that one, yeah. Like at one point, he puts all of, of Dwight's uh, desk supplies, his pens, papers, oh, stapler, no. all in Jello. <gasps> oh, they're all with jello because like that there's a really funny uh funny one where uh randall park uh <laughs> is pretending to be jim oh, and, and he's like well, what I've are you talking that, about like, i in, am in jim clip, and, yeah so that's why people sometimes joke with a randall park movie that oh it's jim from the office <laughs> it's, it's just, funny too because i think i remember just seeing these clips that people put up on instagram yeah. of the a lot fire of memes, a lot of memes. yeah like where they're all running out when they think it's a fire. And yeah, that's a other. classic. And the that's... episode was a bat where there's a bat in a, yeah. or something. That's, yeah. Well, that's the same episode. 
Oh, it's the same. Okay. Yeah. But I've yeah. seen clips of that. Now it's coming yeah. to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another this one of my favorites. Me by. Yeah. Called, this show called, me by. Another one of my favorites is called Dwight's Speech, where mm -hmm. uh, where Jim, uh, Dwight isn't going to speak before the uh, like uh, pay, uh, paper convention, salesman convention, whatever going to speak before this convention and uh and so uh, jim gives him a speech written by mussolini <laughs> oh no and so then he gets up there and he's like the, he's like salesman of, of uh pennsylvania unite <laughs> oh we must control the motherland and all this stuff. Oh, Lord. <laughs> it was oh. so funny. So funny. <laughs> so it's, it is a great show. Like it definitely, those last three seasons, I, I, I don't really care about. I, but pretty much one through four is uh, where it is, is really solid. I often say that I feel like most shows have like two really great seasons. And oh, I agree. Really great show has four seasons. Yeah, but, I agree. Yeah, I agree. The, every once in a while, you have one that just is amazingly consistent, but it's pretty rare. It, well, yeah, because they get long in the tooth, you know. Yeah, and, and the writers change, the cast changes. Writers change, uh, uh, networks might influence yeah. some stuff yeah so you it's i agree there's always one season or two seasons to the show that you love above everything else i have that too mm -hmm. you know like i agree on that yeah. one yeah so what do you have at five i have another animated show and i admit i was a full-grown adult watching this i don't care <laughs> it's a uh, code name kids next door that oh, aired on never the heard cartoon of network it was for six seasons i think it had either one or two tv movies uh oh. basically it's about a group of 10-year-olds that are undercover agents. And they are battling the evil adults because they're all they're all supervillains in a way, and the teenagers. Now, this there's a really like there's a there's a sad sort of angle to this because eventually when the kids become teenagers, when they grow up, they get their mind wiped and then they join the secret agents that are teenagers and they battle the kids. So sometimes they're battling these teenagers that they remember were their fellow operatives, like their fellow, like, uh, you know, friends that they are now against. And there is, they have evil kids like father and his evil kids. There's a real big twist to this with the father, like a main villain and the number one, they all have like number one, number two, and yeah. they all live in this tree house. It's exact. But sometimes that there are kids you know, like this movie ends like mysteriously and it's like sometimes there are adults that still remember that never have gotten mm -hmm. brainwashed and, and like their memory wiped and are still working on the side of the kids. Oh. And it's a secret organization. It's ridiculous. <laughs> They've got the running gag is is the sad supervillains like I'm toilet man. And everybody's <laughs> like, Ugh, he's just going to get the toilet paper stuck in the bathroom. And just the disrespect that even the main supervillains give these guys. It's hysterical. And it's I have lovely. never well, heard of this. Uh, yeah, I, it's I'm just amazed. hard to find. Uh, I think it was for a time on uh, Max, but I don't think it is on, oh. anymore. I think it might stream on Boomerang. I believe you can buy all the seasons on Amazon, uh -huh. but it, this huh. is hard to find. This, cool. this, and it's just really funly and you know animated and it's just fun it's i lived i was a kid again watching this and i didn't care how well i was a grown adult in my 20s watching this but mm. like i didn't care it's just like i love animation and this just made you feel it was smart for kids and smart for adults who were watching mm. it with kids well my number five is actually where i have american idol okay uh, and uh, it, this obviously original still one original run yeah okay. original run especially the first eight seasons i would say mm -hmm. uh were i've never the, watched american idol the it's strongest like, part yeah. and they think the reason why american idol was so much better than any of its because you know who won today what's that because you know who actual the winners were they had careers yeah exactly that's what i'm saying they, yeah, they I'm actually so, like i know american yeah stars i know it they, yeah do we even know who wins American Idol anymore? Do they have like careers? Plus, I hate American Idol because that's the reason my Once Upon a Time got uh, mangled was because, uh -huh. you know, American Idol. But anyhow, I've but, never watched the show because I I've just haven't cared about singing competitions, mm -hmm. I'll be honest. But that I think that's what gave it like some degree of authority because Kelly Clarkson was so good and mm -hmm. such a, you know, yeah. the fact their first 
winner would be such a winner. And it just gave it a legitimacy that, uh, that was sure. again, another show that was very fun to watch with a group that regularly, you know, oh, I can friends, imagine we'd get yeah. together, we'd watch it together. We you would vote. be invested, yeah. especially, I think it was season five was the, uh, soul patrol. Taylor <laughs> I mean, that was have, such a stacked season. He was such an underdog that uh, it was fun. Did, did Kelly Pickler win her season? No, but that was season five. I, she was oh. not. And Jennifer Hudson didn't win either. And she that was, like, I yeah. think, season six or seven. I can't remember, but yeah, yeah so she didn't win. Uh, but uh, but uh, Chris Daughtry, uh, yeah, also um, season five. Great, uh, Catherine Hicks. Um, and oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the dude who sings for Queen now. What's his name? Yeah, um, uh, um, uh, Adam, Adam Lambert. Lambert. Yeah, yeah that I was, don't know if he won or not. That was no, he didn't win. That was like oh my gosh, eight or nine. <laughs> wow, um, so the non-winners are more famous. Yeah, I think. David Archuleta. He didn't win, but he's you know great. Wow. And uh, and uh, of course Carrie Underwood, incredible. Uh, so many great stars, and just the format was so satisfying, and there were just so many great performances, and it was fun to root for an underdog and. And, uh, and I, I didn't love the bad auditions. That was like my least favorite part of the show, but, uh, just everything was so satisfying and you knew that you, I just think it worked, but like the problem with the voice is that nobody that they're ever going to find is ever going to be more iconic than the, the judges. And so it, it, to me, it's not nearly as compelling uh, like who who are they gonna find that's better than Reba McIntyre? I mean, you know what I mean? Oh, like, she's yes, right. She's a judge she's now. A on judge now. Too. Like, are, come on, guys. Yeah, exactly. It's just ridiculous. And I don't so, know. Is there anybody famous? I mean, who has become famous from The Voice? No, not that I know of. Nobody. Yeah. No, nobody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't watch it, but I mean, that yeah. I know of. Uh, so yeah, mm -hmm. I loved American Idol. It was really appointment television. You yeah, had to watch. if that uh, that is something that passed me by, but I was mm -hmm. like, eh, see, <laughs> it's like singing competition. I'm not really into. Like that's why I never watched Eurovision or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I just don't really care. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's Factor Meals. Warmer, sunnier days are calling. Fuel up for them with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for summer thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this month with dietitian approved meals and ingredients you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factory meals are ready in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Enjoy effortless support for your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50 and use code hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code hallmarkies50 at factormeals.com slash hallmarkies50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Definitely check out Factor Meals. We know you'll love them. What do you I have for? I have Rome. Another oh, period okay. piece. Uh, uh -huh. It was on HBO. It only had two seasons. It was super expensive, but it was so important to HBO because it brought back the prestige television. Uh -huh. It stars uh, Kevin McKidd, who's now on um, uh, Grey's Anatomy for many years and yeah. did a whole bunch of stuff. Polly Walker, who's on Bridgerton now. Carrie Condon, who was nominated for an Oscar uh, a couple of years ago, uh, uh -huh. James Purfoy, Lindsay Duncan, Tobias uh, Menzies, uh, uh. Outlander and everything. Oh, and the late, great Ray Stevenson, uh, uh, Kieran Hines. Everybody who was famous was British appeared on that show. Uh -huh. And it's really, it's, it's, you see the eye, you see Rome through the eyes, which is two regular uh, 
soldiers who become best friends, Kevin McKay and Ray Stevenson, and they each have sort of a side, like Ray Stevenson is more um, uh, on the side of eventually uh, August, uh, who ev eventually he becomes Augustus, uh, Oct Octavius, mm -hmm. and Kevin McKay is more like on Caesar's side and then um, Mark Antony's side, and he goes... And he's got a whole bunch of family drama and the same thing. And they're friends who love each other and support the decisions, even when Kevin McCaid goes with Mark Anthony to Egypt with Cleopatra and all that stuff. And the way that they unite in a family. And it's just like, you see just a horrible corruption through just two regular dudes going through their own up and downs. And it's a brutal show. They fight, uh, sexy times, but it's so great. And if you love period pieces, if you love like, the attention to detail on the show was great too, especially for a time. The costumes, it's not a hundred percent historically accurate, but they, you know, they tried and it, it really shows and it's so mm -hmm. great, you know. Yeah, I've never seen that. I've heard yeah. good things though. I've heard good things. I think you might like it, Rachel. Mm -hmm. it, it's mm -hmm. brutal. And it's not mm -hmm. super graphic in 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 intimacy or anything like that, but they do have mm -hmm. those mm -hmm. extra steamier moments, you know. Sure. Of I of early 2000s hbo you know yeah. like yeah so that's a grain of salt you know take that you know sometimes uh -huh. well my number four is one that you should not watch the reboot <laughs> it's the reboot sucks oh, so no. bad it's a uh, arrested development oh uh, yes oh mm -hmm. the first three seasons the Ooh, only perfect. seasons that yeah. count were perfect and so genuinely hilarious such a great cast uh will arnett tony hale david cross I love Jessica Walters, Lucille. She's absolutely hilarious. First Jason Bateman, Michael Sarah, Portia de Rossi, Jeffrey Tambor. Everybody mm -hmm. is absolutely Liza hilarious. Minnelli. It's so funny. Eliza Minnelli. I mean, oh, the guest she was stars. Great in that. Yeah. Going. And it's just, it's sarcastic and ridiculous. And so many, like, so many iconic scenes with like <laughs> with Tobias being the blue man group. Oh or, man. Or yeah. <laughs> the, totally. uh, I love Buster. It's so funny. I mean, <laughs> so it just, it's, it was, it was yeah, so good. It's really a fun show. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you have at three? I have lost. Mm, yeah and this was like appointment television for me yeah it, it was, was too food. like we would watch it my friends and i and then i just and then it just lost me <laughs> I, ironically it, it i <laughs> i just fell off I, and it just stopped watching it after a while uh, uh and yeah i was i was into it the entire run i i'm not upset about how it ended i know that the ending or the last season like the thing sometimes too is like if people who really hate an ending and game of thrones is going through it then negate saying the, the whole entire series sucked. And it's not true. Just because you didn't like an ending doesn't mean the whole entire yeah. series sucked. There was a lot to love. But I was always into Lost and I was okay with how it ended. And I was okay with that last season. It's but... hard when when they are telling a story, though. Like, right. for instance, with Seinfeld, it's not really a narrative. And so the fact is, if the, yes. if the finale isn't that great, who cares? And, but, like, it is hard it, when the ending of your story that you've been telling and you're invested in... It, yeah, it, 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 I think it can be tough. Once, I kind of get both yeah. sides, totally. but um, but yeah, I, I mean, think, yeah. I, for me, I lost just started to lose me when it became like too about the the mystery of the island and the uh, the um uh the once last they episode. reined it in, I think it became a much tighter show when they were allowed to rein it in. Yeah. Also, what hurt too is that oh god. This, Kids today don't know the struggle we had, Rachel, where repeats. Like, if you missed a new episode, you had to yeah. wait till, they, till the mid-season for it to repeat. <laughs> That's true. And sometimes they would not repeat at all. So if you missed an episode, you were out. You know, you couldn't watch it, like, for years on end. But, yeah, and then the constant wait for new episodes. And once they shortened the seasons, once they tightened it in, and once the studio stopped putting their foot in it, I think it got better. But it's still such an important show. Yeah. There are so many shows today that just replicate Lost mm -hmm. and what yeah, it did. And I, I did really love it for those like first yeah. two seasons. I really That's did. one of the best episodes of television ever in season four, The Constant, where uh -huh. they time travel. It's time. And you're like, what? This show's crazy. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It was wonderful. 
I love that that episode where they yeah. the um the person always thinks they have to hit the button. Yeah. Right. Um, and I uh, what and happens when he doesn't hit the what button? Happens when he oh, I mean, that's a great episode. Yeah. I mean, it's like oh, such great characters in it and such, you know, um mm-hmm. so many people who became famous from that show, like Evangeline Lily. Yeah. And um mm-hmm. so many people that we do know in name, you know, from name, but it, yeah. I mean, it's just that really it is it of an era, and I think it's still a fun rewatch, even if you know what's going on. I, I think it's, I think watching it, it's funny because I think watching it in a binge works better than waiting week to week. Even though I, I miss that, I miss watching one episode and just waiting on your hands and knees, like what's going to happen next week. Yeah, yeah. Like I miss that weekly thing, and I, I think. I mean, they still do weekly episodes where you have to wait. I think that's why I love my Turkish drama so much because they end on on a cliffhanger, and I'm like, I gotta wait a week. You <laughs> well, know, to that's watch, what's you know. been fun about more than a week because I gotta like find a place to watch it with English subtitles. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what's been fun about the way home is that it's had right. that yes. for, for me kind of brought that back the experience. Yeah, of, the experience. It, so little of that because everything is so bingeable today, mm-hmm, right? And they're making them bingeable. So yeah. you don't really end on a cliffhanger because you can watch the episode right next, you know, right after. Yeah. And while well, it's and, fun to binge, it's well, also fun to wait. The Way Home is kind of similar to Lost in the sense that, like, everybody who's mm-hmm. watching it can notice, like, different details mm-hmm. of, mm-hmm. like, oh, they're reading that book there that says, you know, 1814. Right. That, like, it, and it was the same way with Lost. Like, it was fun to watch with a group because everybody would kind of notice absolutely like, little Easter eggs about the different character story and you have people who would have water cooler what they would call water yeah, water cooler would talk about it and the thing with binge again don't totally hate it is that people will forget it in about a week's time yeah it's not but, that okay everybody's talking about bridgerton right now right but once yeah. part two is out and once everybody sees that nobody will be talking about that show. well i'll still be talking about it but you'll yeah. still be talking about it. people <laughs> who love it do but but the cycle of television and the yeah, cycle no, of shows lasting in people's mind is yeah. so much shorter today. It's true. So. Uh, well, my number three is uh, is Sex and the City. I am mm-hmm. at number three. And yeah. this is partly because it was so like memorable as far as me recapping it, you know, totally. obviously this years later on. But I had such a great time with Jax. Uh, we became such good friends. We were already friends, but, you know, that experience yeah. solidified that and uh and I, it was an important show for me to review uh on the pod because i was getting really tired of people infantilizing me and treating mm-hmm. me like a child just because i come from a conservative background that There's i couldn't no handle for that. that 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 i couldn't handle things that were more mature and you know that i was i felt like people were treating me like a child And uh, so I specifically wanted to do something that would challenge that. And uh, I had watched Sex in the City uh, on like TNT and TBS, which is like the edited version. I never actually watched it uh, all the way through every episode Uh, and uh, and I watched it and I, you know, I really enjoyed it. There are parts that don't hold up. You know, there's cringe parts like most shows, Uh, but I, I love all the ladies uh yeah. and their friendship and their dynamic and stories and <sighs> so many funny episodes it and was i, I you Definitely. know i think i i know a lot of people hate carrie but i i don't hate carrie uh i think i will re- relate to her a little bit because i i did have sort of my blogging run uh where i was yeah. you know i would but it's definitely my stuck in its era things. that it was yeah but that was the era that yeah. you know like mm-hmm. <laughs> those articles are written like, oh, who could have watched these people? I, talk- I was like, my gosh, when you watch something that old, here's a, I always tell people when you watch something that that even 10 years old yeah. or whatever, when you watch something made from another country or something that old, you have to be prepared to see things not as you see things today. Times yeah. were different. Things made in other country are not how we make it here in America. It it's like an archive. Yeah. It like captures a moment. Exactly. In time. So like, it's so funny because people are like, I can't watch the show, you know? And I was like, well, they do things differently in so-so country than we do here in America. And a lot of people like don't understand that for whatever reason. Uh-huh. And you should just be prepared when you watch things that yeah. not everything holds up to 
how it is today. Yeah, but I I really like what it has to say about dating and relationships. Totally. And, I mean, it was very important when it friendship. came out. And what? then they ruined it with and just like that. Oh, and just like that is, is Miranda was my favorite character, and I yeah. can't go. I I do see Miranda quite differently now because oh, of it, just like that, and I shoot. hate that. Yeah. I hate that. It's I so bizarre. Miranda like and, of all the characters just, to turn uh, into a mousy, regressive, uh, like. What were they? She was like, I just cannot she understand. yelling at everybody because they didn't know how to use TiVo or email. And like, she's like, I don't know how to use this. And I was like, come on, guys. Like, why do you have why, to do this Miranda? Why would they yeah. think that that Miranda so would turn into this person? Like, I, I don't, I mean, I don't mind her leaving Steve or having this, like, in theory. But why they would think that the way they did it is, like, the empowering nope. way. I mean, it's just it's, made, it's it sad because... Far. It but, has affected my uh, 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 affected me yeah. and my love of Miranda because she was my favorite. Yeah, I and, mean I, I, Charlotte, I I I think is my favorite. Well, Charlotte's like I feel like I can, can relate to Charlotte more than yeah. than the other women. That is but, the thing, and just like that is, it sort of made you realize like Charlotte's the best character as far as yeah. Like, she she admits she's flawed. She's yeah. flawed. She grows. She changes. She's uh, totally. like oh. Wow, but uh, but yeah, I, I I I I do love the show just uh for the journey that I had with the show as yeah, well. Yeah, I totally. The episode that sticks with me a lot from back in the day was when um Carrie, it was Carrie's birthday, and she was ticking the a new oh, box thirty five. Right, and episode. and forward. And I and when I I was going through that and I'm like oh I feel you Carrie I feel you we now yeah. moving to the next and, box. and everybody forgets and I'm very dangerously close Rachel to the next box after that <laughs> <laughs> and she's sitting there alone at her birthday yeah and and Jax and I went to that restaurant yes I remember when listening I was to the yeah we went and ate there it was really <laughs> fun uh, yeah. so yeah it's it's just, it's a great show uh, so what totally. do you have at two this is where I have Mad Men. Uh, yeah, okay. for me, it's a yeah. perfect show. Yeah. Um, it struggled a little bit in I think six and and even the last season seven, but it found its footing. It ended well, and it just John Ham like he had a task to carry with him because yeah. he Impression. is an unlikable character. Mm -hmm. And um, and I know people were like, oh, his January Jones. I, I felt such empathy for her. And like, oh, justice to her character because she should have ended that way either. Like they were harsh with that, and and of course is his terrible second marriage and and John Han like really made you care, not exactly about him but the people around him because everybody was just a terrible person, not totally, but like a majority of these people, a lot of selfish especially the people, men, yeah, were a lot of selfish and terrible people, and very relatable in a way because i think we all know people like that but like to make us still support that character was a feat unto itself mm -hmm. and we don't have to have shows with likable characters we can we can watch yeah. shows with flawed characters and characters who are terrible and as long still, as it feels authentic is, yeah exactly you know and yeah. um and that the only reason that i it started to lose me in those later seasons is it just mm -hmm. started to feel a little repetitive like that, that Don kept going through the same arc sort of over and over and exactly over. Exactly. Like it's when he had moments like. And I definitely could have used one character who was the sort of the humanity of, and I know that Peggy kind of was, and then Joan sort of becomes it, but, but everybody cheats. Everybody, you know, like it would have been the, nice. For having, me, Joan gets worse as the series go on. Yeah. Um, but she's yeah, also, you, I think one of the she's supposed to be sort of our connection i think to the totally. show and yeah. I, and i just i it would have been nice to have had one character that was sort of your uh that doesn't cheat on their spouse that doesn't <laughs> you know like to have one like human Ugh. more humane character but it's still it's incredibly well made incredibly well acted and yeah. it's, it's a great show I, that moment at yeah. the end of season four where he breaks down with the Hershey when he's trying to do that pitch. And he's like, yeah, I used great. to get Hershey bars from the prostitutes because I grew up in a brothel. And he cries and he's like, he's completely broken as a person. That costs yeah. him his job. And he has to reinvent himself again. Yeah. And it's like, it, 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 I can see where it gets a little repetitive because he doesn't learn. He's so stubborn. And he really doesn't learn at the end either. 
-hmm. if you think about it. And he's such a terrible husband and a terrible father, but these women yet still love him and his Mm -hmm. children still love him despite that. Yeah. And like the most, like the, the most important people in, in John's life were his daughter, uh, uh, January Jones. And then, um, uh, the wife of the man's identity that he took were the three most important people in his life. And outside of that, he had nobody and he lied to them consistently. And so he was never truthful to any of them that, you know, well, my number two is actually, I have survivor. Okay. And I I obviously, I'll be honest, obviously it's still going on to this day. And uh, it's, I, I haven't watched it for like, four or five seasons because I've just been so busy. I haven't had time, but there was a time when this show was really important in my life where I was super involved in the, in the whole community around it and talking about the episodes and talking about, Oh, did they make the right decision here? What's going on? And, uh, and uh, I, I even went, Oh, there's this podcast. Rob has a podcast, uh, RHAP. And I went to a, a live recording of that podcast uh, in, uh, this was like 2012, I think it was, uh, in New York uh, and made so many friends. I had such a, like, it was really important in my life, this show for yeah. like six years. Uh, and these early seasons uh, were so good and so engrossing. I mean, there's a few that are, aren't good, like Thailand. But uh, but what's fascinating to me is that every season, the winner is different in the sense of how they won, what their strategy was. Uh, and and I find that fascinating. Even if you have, there's there's two repeat winners that have won twice. And even, but even their wins are like slightly different each season. And so that makes it so fascinating to see, you know, how the, the strategy changes depending on the different groups and what they do. And, and, uh, and there's some uh, finagling by, you know, by the network and everything to make it exciting and like the different idols and clues and things like that, that they give and, and, uh, but never anything almost never was there was there something that felt like they were determining the outcome it always feels like in the end it is decided by the people that are playing who they want to give the million dollars to at the end and it's so fascinating because a lot of times the the person that played the hardest is the one that doesn't win because they 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 because that's what makes this show good is that is that it's not about surviving really it's about uh it's about managing to kick off everybody off the island and deny them of the million dollars while still keeping yourself likable enough that they will vote for you at the end right. you know so there's the social component that's as important as the physical components as the other components and uh, and it's it, it, i just think it's a it's a great show and uh, it's, I had to have it, it too, because oh, yeah. like, and it's it was, important too, I it think, was because, such an important yeah. show in my life for years. But it's important in general too, because it kicked off the reality competition craze. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't have like uh, Amazing Race and mm-hmm. Top Chef. Top Chef I watched for years. I've kind of fallen off of it. I just don't yeah. have the time. But I watched Top Chef for many years and I Project yeah. Runaway. I watched the Bravo years mm-hmm. for that one. And then yeah. I kind of lost uh, interest when it moved to lifetime and yeah. then back to bravo i haven't seen it since but all those yeah. kind of and they're still ongoing but it really brought that sort of uh, reality competition yeah. back into the spotlight so but it's i actually, think that, that people who don't watch survivor think it's like trashier than it is like it's actually uh, yeah. like a really smart game it's something that like i said not only the the strategy but the social strategy not only the physical demands that there's so many things that have to be balanced and that's what makes it interesting to watch each week to be like okay you know how is how are they going to pull it off what's going to happen and of course you have your favorites every season and it's it's really like game theory in 
in a show. And of course, then Big Brother would come after. And uh, and that's Big Brother is interesting because it's so much longer. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like not what is it, 90 days? I mean, it's a long run that they're in that house in Big Brother. And uh, and so and in Big Brothers, I've never watched it as regularly as Survivor because it's such a time investment. Uh, it, multiple days during the week, and yeah, uh, and you they know, have a lot of people, feed, a lot of people watch the live feed feeds. Too. Yeah, oh my yeah, gosh. the live feeds. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so it's it's a big time commitment. But but Survivor is is a really smart show, and uh, it makes you think about kind of what what choices would I make in this situation? How would I behave? How would I respond? What's the best strategy? for this person, uh, you know, and, and do they, cause they're human beings. And so they're not always going to make the perfect choices and, uh, and, and why do they not make the right choice? And it's just, it's really fun to like talk and analyze. And, and especially when I was part of the fan groups and everybody, you know, kind of talking about, Oh, can you believe they did that? You know, it's just, that's fun. And uh, I, I, I need to get back, but I just, you know, it's just one of those things. I, I never thought that I would lose Survivor, but I just, it had to go because I just don't have time. I do think that a sign of a good show is that when I've heard people talk about how they've gone back and watched the f- older seasons uh-huh. and like binge watched it and still love it. Yeah. And they can, so prior seasons are still very rewatchable to people, which makes them want to watch the newer seasons. And if you can pull that yeah. off with it, a lo- a, such a long running show like this, especially a reality yeah. show, or I it's, should say reality competition. Yeah. It, that's in, a sign season. of something that there is something still yeah. that people love about it. There's season, I think they're on season 45. That's amazing and, though. Yeah. The last season that I watched regularly was season 40, which I think in a way kind of felt like the reason why I maybe stopped after that is because it sort of felt like the finish because mm-hmm. it was an all winter season. Uh, so right. we had all of these people that I, I knew and loved and it was such a great season. It was so much fun. And, and so I think maybe that's part of it as well. Uh, but yeah, it's great. It was a great yeah. show. It is a great show. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies March store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. What do you have at number one? I have Alias, which is uh, what I love. My favorite show of the early 2000s, it uh, starred Jennifer Garner and there are spies and Victor Garber as Spy Daddy, who is awesome. And it's about a father and daughter who are spies. And the daughter doesn't know that her dad's a spy and then thinks he's a double agent. And oh no, her mom's an evil spy. And there is mythology and a little bit of fantasy sort of sci-fi elements. But it all ends up in this big sort of mystery box. And it's J.J. Abrams, so there's a mystery box sort of element to it. But it's such a fun show. And it's just like, it's, I, I just remember, you knew that Alias was hot because they used to air promos where like, if you like the triangle between Sonny, Brenda, and Jax on General Hospital, then you got to watch the triangle on <laughs> Alias. And I was like, Alias has made it, you know, like it would yeah. be primetime episodes like that. <laughs> and that was back in the day. Um, and Sonny, Brenda, and Jax were a hot triangle. Back in the day. So like yeah. all the comparisons. But this was a fun uh, spy show. And I, I'm not really into spy stuff. But I had a lot of fun with this. And Jennifer Garner was great. And I still love Jennifer Garner very much. And I, I think she still does incredible work. But she has been stuck in mom mode in movies for over a decade. And yeah, 
bring this yeah, Jennifer Garner back because she can still those do Those are the it. parts available to women I in know. that age. Like it's, they, I mean, they're not ugh. given women in that age. They're not giving them the leads, you know? And the, the funny is thing sad. is that Alias is actually, I'm almost afraid to put this out there because yeah. who knows what would happen. But Alias could come back as a sort of rebooted sequel because mm-hmm. the show did mm-hmm. end with Jennifer Garner's character and um, yeah, I I feel Michael like... Martin's character. They had children. Uh huh. Their children could be spies today. Yeah. Jennifer Garner could be as awesome as Victor Garner was as Spy Daddy. She could be yeah. Spy Mommy because he he, yeah. he played such a big part of that. They could continue Alias in a sort of form with her and her children uh-huh. and all the shenanigans and all the spy crazy spy devices they came up with and stuff. You know they what I would love? That. And I, would I would love it. I would love if Jennifer Garner had like a Liam Neeson type action little renaissance, you know? Well, she I had Penelope like people, a couple of years ago. I think that I was the name of that. About that. But, yeah. I, but I feel like yeah, people she would have be forgotten great. that she has those action chops. Yeah, she could people still forgotten. do it. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see that. I think that would be really fun. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, great choice. I, 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 you know, love that. Yeah. And my number one is where I have 24. I okay. absolutely yeah. loved this show. I love the whole format. This show I could never get into. Oh, really? My brother loved the show for a couple of years. I, I love the show. I, 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 I was totally engrossed. Like this is a show that would probably actually be better to binge watch. Oh, because you yeah, this is the, a, next, the next I, hour and the next hour and the next hour. We got to find out what's going to happen. Had, yeah. Oh. It's a hysterical story. Like, I think my brother bought the DVD. Of it. I think he might have watched one episode and then ended up buying the season set. This was oh, right after the same, first season but... ended. Yeah. And he was out sick and he was like, I'm just going to watch this. And he had to come down. And he's like, I think I just watched that whole season. Like he just sat there and binged. He was so into it, and he became like a twenty four fan because of that. And he's like, it's so good oh. that he just. So the binge watch actually does help this show. Yeah, it does. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I, I did think the same it, thing where I got. The- I, I could never get into it, and I just thought it got ridiculous. Um, yeah, I mean, the last two. And they tried to bring it back twice again. You know. Yeah. And uh, but a reboot too. Even six and seven aren't as good, but I still, I still, I don't know. I just found yeah, it there's like something about so it, yeah. engrossing. Like I, I loved the format. I loved the style. I loved the relationship between Jack and Chloe. The that, definitely something fresh for that that friendship that between time, yeah. them. And every season, trying to figure out who the mole is. Bro, I mean, there it's was like always an, a mole. That it's just like a Mission Impossible movie. There's always a mole, oh, mole. and yeah. Tom Cruise always ends up going rogue. And, and so that was like every season of 24 too. Yeah. And I, I think it's a bit of a hot take, but my favorite season of the show was season five when mm-hmm. you have Gene Smart playing Martha Logan and uh, the, the, the president's wife, first lady. And uh, she is absolutely great in this role and uh and you know i think we'd seen her like on designing women and fraser and you know things like that but i didn't know her as like a dramatic right. performance and she's so oh, yeah mm-hmm. broken in this uh in this role and uh she's she is severe mental uh anxiety and other problems and her performance i think she won an emmy for it she absolutely yeah. deserved it she's so good and uh, in this role and just that whole plot of season 5 was brilliant and uh and i actually i think she's the is the vice president's wife anyway but um uh but she's great and i uh, and and that's just a great season. It's so well acted, so well done. I would put any season of 24, any season of 24 up with any major uh, action movie. Right. Like yeah. as far as the filming and the, you know, the staging of the action scenes. And and it used to be that there was like a big difference in quality between television and the movies. Oh, totally. And, yeah. And I, I think 24 was the first show that, at least for me, that I was like, this is as good, if not better, than exactly. anything yeah. that Hollywood is producing. 
a lot of action. shows in the 2000s were like and just that, the ticking you know? clock it just worked so well for me and it was so engrossing and i you know i, I just loved jack as a character and like I said, his friendship with Chloe was really good over the years. And, you know, I love characters like President Palmer. Uh, mm -hmm. It was great. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I am surprised yeah. that they haven't tried to reboot this again, because I know they they had one season. Yeah, they tried to reboot. They had some returning characters, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know how it didn't work, but I'm surprised they haven't tried again because the premise of this show, I didn't hate the reboot works. I like, I just like this formula so much that it yeah. worked well enough for me. But I'm surprised they but, can't, they can't like succeed again in it. You know, yeah, yeah. the idea of it. Yeah. But it's just spies, it, right? Yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, there's like a CA yeah. type thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my number one. Uh, but okay. uh, let's go over our picks. So I have How I Met Your Mother at 10, Men in Trees at 9, I have Mad Men at 8, Cranford at 7, The Office at 6, American Idol at 5, Arrested Development at 4, Sex and the City at 3, Survivor at 2, and 24 at 1. So at 10, I have Nip Tuck, The Tudors at 9, 8, I have House. Seven is Pushing Daisies, King of the Hill at six, Codename Kids Next Door at five, Rome at number four, number three I have Lost, number two Mad Men, and my number one is Alias. Isn't that fascinating that we only have one? Yeah. Well, common? there's so many. Like, if you Google shows from 2000s, it's like, we think we're at peak TV now. We mm -hmm. were at peak TV then. There's too much TV now. There's no yeah. way we can watch everything. It's true. Um, Absolutely. I mean, almost every day someone tells me, you can watch the show. You gotta watch this show. And I'm like, what? I, I can't remember. I can't remember what show it was, but somebody said this show is really good. And I was like, yeah, did it just start? And they were like, no, it's in season six. I was like, oh, what? that always happens too. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm like, like what are you seasons? talking like, about? What? Like, I can't get into that now. You keep yeah. talking. I keep saying I'm going to get into Heartland. I keep, you know, I'm like, we're too and far I in. I, I don't thought, know if I can. <laughs> I thought about including Heartland on this list because it's mm -hmm. transcends, oh, yeah. but I think I, I decided, okay, I'm going to have it on the next right. list. I do keep trying, Rachel. I'm like, I'm going to make time. And I'm like, ooh, <laughs> 18 seasons. Yeah. Mm. You know. I mean, in fairness, it is a show that the seasons stand alone pretty well. Like, you right. really don't need. I need to know that yeah, much back. See, I know myself. I start watching something now and I'm like, I have to backtrack. And then this yeah. is how I got in trouble with some of my Turkish soaps. I was like, oh, is this a sequel series? Gotta go back and watch the first season. That's like a thousand episodes, you know, for seven seasons. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and if they're an hour and a half, it's a blessing because they're the shorter seasons, like the shorter episodes. But I always get in trouble because I have a completist problem. Yeah. Well, I asked on Twitter what people's favorites were and uh, got a bunch of responses. He says, uh, he says, SpongeBob, mm -hmm. uh, what's new Scooby-Doo, Foster's Home. Uh, oh, yeah. This, he has the Simpsons Mythbusters. That's a good show. Yeah. I liked that. How I Met Your Mother, Arrested Development, 30 Rock, uh, Scrubs, Futurama, um, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Party Down, Weeds. Uh, James Buzz, he says, Supernatural, The Guardian, State of Grace, Joan of Arcadia, Angel. Yeah, neither of us had Buffy on there. No. Which I, I did enjoy that, but. Yeah, uh, but I, yeah. It and wouldn't Caroline, make my list, though. Caroline Richardson says, Gilmore Girls, Gossip Girl, One Tree Hill. Hmm. Um, Chris Connor says, Mad Men, Life on Mars, The Thick of It, Keep Show. Uh, Michelle well, I Benson. wonder if it's the UK Life on Mars or the. American Life on Mars. Oh, I don't know. Because Americans sucked. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Michelle yeah. <laughs> Benson, she says, Battlestar Galactica, the reboot, Friday mm. Night Lights, Everwood, Fringe, One Tree Hill, Lost, Criminal Minds, Doctor Who, Heartland, uh, is, and that are still, and those are still going. Doctor Who was a hard... Yeah, that was a hard one. For I me, about. because I enjoy certain eras more than others. Uh -huh. So I have it, and I still have to watch the new season. I think I might, that would be in the next, like I said, in 2010s. Since it's right. Still like, yeah, especially for like the reboot as uh, like, uh, as, you know, I just didn't know where to place it. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, the Girling Nerd, she has Pushing Daisies, Gilmore mm-hmm. Girls, Psych, which I know a lot of oh, people yeah. have, mm-hmm. and uh, Lost. Um, we got uh, we got a bunch of Pushing Daisies, a bunch of Psychs. Uh, Brian Shively says Everwood House, The Mentalist. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, Casey says One Tree Hill, The OC, What I Like About You. And uh, we got a bunch of Arrested Developments. We got a bunch of Mad Men. We got a bunch. Of- uh, so a lot of different answers to this one. So that is one thing I did not watch in the 2000s were the teen shows like One Tree Hill or Gossip Girl or anything like that. I could not, I just it, could not put myself mentally there again, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I think I could watch a teen show today, no problem, and have fun with it. But it would be so vastly different. Mm-hmm. I guess from what I would remember from when I, you know, being that age, you know, yeah, but I could, I could still have fun it's with it. But back experience. then, yeah, but back then I was like, I can't with these people. <laughs> yeah, um, Eli Sanza, he has Samurai Jack, Lost, Supernatural, yeah. Everybody Hates Chris, uh, oh, yeah. Avatar, That's The fun. Last Airbender, Robot Chicken, Dexter, Mad mm. Men, Breaking Bad, uh, which I. That's a hard one because that's that does transcend over 2010s versus because we ended this in 2009. That show started in 2008. Right. Uh, yeah. So yeah, but uh, in a community, yes, community on his list. So there's lots of different there's shows. Lots. So let us All know if you're listening what you think and what would be your favorite of the 2000s. We'd love to hear your thoughts uh, in the comment section or on Twitter. And uh, Terry, where can people find you? I'm at Twitter at Flurry Heaven. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. And a reminder that if you want to hear our bonus picks, then sign up for the Patreon and you get to hear those episodes and you'll really enjoy it. And, uh, and if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you are watching or listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, make sure you check out our rankings of our favorites of the nineties and the eighties. You'll really enjoy those episodes. And if, uh, and make sure to check out the Patreon and the merch store. We should appreciate that. And uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.